Hi, I'm George Vogues and I'm an assistant professor at the School of Management, Mahindra University. I teach courses in the area of economics and finance. Uh, here at Mahindra, I've just recently concluded a course on macroeconomics. A little bit about my background. I have my PhD in the broad area of applied economics and finance from the Institute of Financial Management and Research. Prior to joining Mahindra, I have uh, served as an assistant professor at the Dr. B. R. Bidka School of Economics, Bangalore. Prior to that, I have a small stint of teaching experience at the IFMA Graduate School of Economics, where I taught the MBA Quant Finance Students a course on Financial Time Series Analysis. Yeah. So, what is so exciting about this course? See, macroeconomics is like trying to solve a giant puzzle except that the puzzle is constantly changing and sometimes missing pieces. It's like trying to put together the jigsaw puzzle when someone keeps adding in or taking away pieces. What is even interesting is that each time the image morphs itself into something new. And just then, when you think you have figured it out, someone throws a monkey's wrench. And the picture, the whole thing just falls apart. For example, it's just like the recession or the COVID or the war that we saw recently. But look, what makes it more fun than this, right? It's like being a detective, trying to gather clues and putting pieces together to uncover the mystery of why the economy is behaving the way it is. And if you can crack the code, you might just end up being the next Sherlock Holmes of macroeconomics. What are transfer payments? Transfer payments are those payments that one party makes to the other without an exchange of value. So the what are the examples of transfer payments? Pensions. Pensions. <coughs> Subsidies. Unemployment pensions or whatever uh, transfers the government pays or, or uh, health benefits. Right, the government pays, but subsidies is something that I want to correct. Okay, uh, subsidies does not really come part become a part of the transfer payment. So this this needs to be understood clearly. Okay? Now, why is subsidy not a part of transfer payment? How do you understand subsidy? Government is paying on behalf of you. The example is LPG, uh, the petrol and diesel that you put on your car. These are all subsidized by the government. Right? Now, why is subsidy not a transfer payment? For that, to understand that, you need to understand what transfer payment is. What is transfer payment? Payment of money or exchange of cash or money between people without any value in exchange. Right? If, if somebody is paid a pension, they had worked in the past, but when I am calculating GDP now, transfer payment does not count. Because transfer payments does not form a part of GDP because there is no creation of value in this year. Are you able to understand? Is everybody clear on that? Transfer payments does not form a part of GDP because there is no creation of value. There is no production. There is no production of goods and services in the economy. Yeah? Now, think why a subsidy is not a part of transfer payments? Yes? Maybe because subsidy is more of a discount. Yes, sir. Subsidy is more of a discount than payment. Okay. Let's connect that. Subsidy, when you understand the concept of subsidy, it is government supporting you. But unlike transfer payment, you cannot say that there is no value in exchange. For example, the government is subsidizing LPG with say like 200 or 250 rupees. The value is already there. LPG is there. Okay, something that should otherwise cost you 1000 rupees, it is costing you 800 rupees, which means that government is subsidizing up to 200 rupees. Now, that subsidy goes into this value. Something is valuable, I mean, the value of this LPG is 1000 rupees. Just that you are paying 800, on behalf of you, the government is paying 200. The value is created, there is some production, 
let's say a good there is a good you are paying some money government is supporting you in that mostly in agricultural lab for agricultural laborers to fertilizers they do give a lot of subsidies electricity for new companies that are coming up to promote more companies to come up government gives subsidies in terms of like supporting them in terms of electricity water supply etc right so the value is being created and the government is supporting them so the value creation happens even when there is subsidy so it is it is counted in the gdp and it is not a transfer payment hello i'm krishna bagriwal and i'm a b economics and finance student i'm pursuing this subject because i really like it i've been studying it for 5 years and i've decided it's my passion in this course we're going to be studying macroeconomics macroeconomics is a field which talks about the economy in general in this we're going to be talking about government policy we're going to be talking about certain macroeconomic variables and we're going to be talking about how these two things collide to affect our daily life an example of this would be inflation inflation is the rise of general price levels and in this course we go in depth learning about cpi and how it works for this course our professor is professor george he's a really active teacher he's able to take questions and make them interesting make them engaging and target them at certain people who would be best fit to answer them he's able to pull out examples and case studies from all the parts of history and from the world and he's able to make them engaging and fun to the topic at hand so we know that he's very knowledgeable about what he's doing and we can see he's very passionate about teaching for me this course is super interesting because i'm going to be studying economics academically this course helps me build a foundation with enough depth that i can use these this knowledge even 5 years 10 years into my academic journey hello everyone i'm sakshi totare from mahindra university school of management i'm a first year student and i'm here to give you a review about our macroeconomics course which is taught to us by professor george uh, the course is very engaging and uh, interesting our professor makes sure that he covers diverse and relevant topics which range from economic growth to monetary and fiscal policies as a student who's never taken economics before her undergrad it uh, he professor george makes the course really easy and simple to understand for students who have never had microeconomics or as well as students who have learned economics in their school years which is really interesting and uh, professor george always makes sure that we are engaged in class he encourages critical thinking and discussion which is something that i admire a lot about him uh, the assignments and the exams that he gave us helped us apply our knowledge very um, in helped us apply our knowledge in the real world which was very interesting to me overall the course is very rewarding and it has been a valuable experience to me thank you So let me leave you to ponder on a classic question once raised by the father or founder of modern macroeconomics Sir John Maynard Keynes and here it is when facts change i change my mind what do you do sir